Hi everyone and welcome to today's session. Today we'll be touching on a very interesting topic, which is Lama2, the newest open source model. This is released by Meta and it claims to be as good as ChatGPT. So we will find out later whether it is as good or not. I've done some experiments on it, but personally I'm very excited about this model because it is free for commercial use, okay, bearing some clauses. So without further ado, let us explore this model. So first, let's see how good it is compared to ChatGPT. All right, so I've done a series of experiments just to check how good Lama2 is, okay, because if it's not that good, we don't have to talk about it. So I've done like in some of my earlier videos, like this zero shot classification where you just put in the like, for example, garden, mountain, sky as three different categories without any examples. And I want to test how good the LM can generalize a new text, okay, to fit into one of these categories. Like, for example, while well, look at the clouds, the word sky is not mentioned here, but based on context, if the semantic embedding is captured correctly, it should be able to know it's the sky. Flowers, it should know that it's from the garden. And slope, it should know it's the mountains. So this is quite a difficult task actually because this is zero shot. I only described the categories and it's supposed to come up with the answer. And you can see that ChatGPT does it well, C, A, B. I apply the same thing to Lama2 and you can see that it also gives the same thing, C, A, and B. So it does this classification well, so it's on par. Uh, just one artifact that I noticed is that it best to repeat the last letter or last character. I'm using the demo from Hugging Face. So I'm not too sure uh, why this happens. So when I get access to the model and I try it out, I will just verify that this is not there. Okay? If not, what you can do is you can pass through your output and just delete the last character. Okay, this is an artifact I've realized um, when I played around with the model on Hugging Face. So next we have JSON prompting. So JSON prompting is quite important because a lot of things like Langchain, even my strict JSON framework, like a, a lot of times we want to get output from the large language model. We want it to be in a very strict and confined format. We don't want it to be free flow because sometimes you want like product name, customer rating, you know, you just want the answer. You don't want it to say the customer rating is 5 upon 10 and this is very good and so on. Large language models tend to be very verbose. They like to talk a lot and outputting it in JSON format because it's conditioned on the web's data of JSON, which is quite short and sweet in some categories, it will be less verbal, less verbose and it's easier to interpret the data as well. So being able to do JSON prompting is very, very important. So I, I did this test to see whether it can do. So I just copy and paste some text from the Llama website, or rather this is the Hugging Face website that describes Llama2. I asked for a summary of text, the type of sentiment, and the list of entities mentioned. So this is exactly the same way I prompted the strict JSON framework. I mean, if you are familiar with my earlier video, yeah, I, I also did some form of prompting that um, does this kind of like for this kind of results you want, you just describe what you want and then you can get the large language model to output it. So ChatGPT can do it quite well. So it like summary, Lama2 is the state of the art open access large language model. The sentiment is positive. Entities are Lama2, Meta, Hugging Face. So it's quite good for ChatGPT. So how does Lama fare? So Lama actually does about the same. You see, Meta really is Lama2. Okay, family of large language access. So it, it, it did get the context well. It summarized pretty well. All right. And um, positive is correct as well. The entities here, Meta, Lama2. So it's kind of miss, missing one, one more hug, uh, hugging face. Okay, but I, I don't consider that to be a very big deficit because like, you know maybe the training data did not include hugging face as an entity. So in terms of entity recognition, maybe ChatGPT is better. Okay, but overall, the the way that it comes out in the JSON output is many for especially for this test that just does. I just want to see how good it is to do JSON output thing. Uh, Lama has passed the test, barring one extra um, n colon here. I'm not sure why this n curly bracket. Yeah. Sure uh, yeah. the same text that that you gave it because it looks slightly different. Oh, you mean the left and the right? Oh yeah, yeah. it's actually supposed to be the same text. Okay, it's just a little bit different, but it's okay. Yeah, it's mostly the same, right? Oh yeah, I, I think there's one last part here, the code pre-trained models. Yeah, okay, so I missed out that part on the right side. Yeah. Now, what about your output in JSON format? That also looks different, or is it just the line breaks don't matter? Uh, which line breaks? 
Well, if you look how you wrote it on the left and right, the prompt is, is, is formatted slightly different. I don't know if that can affect the LLM, right? Because you oh, put- Oh, you mean the, the left side and the right side? Yeah, you put line breaks. I guess they don't matter, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't matter, yeah. Okay. So okay. Um, this, one, this, this one shows that the JSON prompting works, and this is quite important because like if you use open AI functions, all these are also done using JSON. Yeah, so you, if you use my strict JSON framework, this actually would work as well. So this is a very, very important thing. So this is one thing that I like Lamatu a lot for, because if it can do this kind of JSON prompting, it can do a lot of things. All right, next we have free form generation. So I asked it to generate a rep, all right? So a four sentence rep on Lama 2, Meta and Hugging Face. So you can see this is chat GPT's one. It's not, not too bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, see, we, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna go through this. I mean, this is just for fun. It's just to see whether it can do like this kind of poem generation and so on, uh, it, it nails it. Okay, so Lama 2 performs just as well, okay? Next, we have fact retrieval. So this is again, a very important trait. Okay, because like when you want to do retrieval augmented generation, you want to take some data from some databases and these data are factual data. And you want the large language model to give you an output based on those factual data and nothing more. So fact retrieval is a very important thing for large language models. And so over here, I just created my own facts. Okay, I want to make a very short prompt. Tom has a cat. Mary loves to drink coffee. Coffee is an aromatic drink. Dogs are man's best friend. So these four of them, they ask four different questions. So the first question is, does Tom own a dog? So the answer should be no, okay? Or not sure, okay? Because I prompted it to say not sure if I'm if unsure. Because we never gave it any facts about Tom owning a dog. Yeah, I tried to confuse the model because I put dogs over here. Okay, so if the model doesn't know that this is not a fact, it might confuse that, oh, dogs appear in the prompt. So yes, Tom owns a dog. So chat GPT that uh, doesn't get confused, Lama 2 doesn't get confused. So that's great. Question one, nil. Okay, question two, what's the name of Tom's cat? So I didn't give a name for Tom's cat. So if the model gives a name, it means it's hallucinating. So over here is not sure, and here is not sure. Okay, so it's good. Lama 2 and chat GPT are on par. Does Mary like aromatic drinks? So this is a second order reasoning question because I did not say Mary likes aromatic drinks. I said Mary likes to drink coffee. And coffee is an aromatic drink. So it's something like a knowledge graph. You have like, it. first Mary likes coffee, coffee is an aromatic drink. So you need to infer these two steps in order to answer this question. And the answer is yes, Mary likes to drink coffee. And here is yes or so. So both are equally good. The last one, who is Mary's boyfriend? Okay, again, I did not give any name or any indication that Mary had a boyfriend here. So it should be not sure. And both nailed it. So this is very good because if you want to do retrieval augmented generation using Lama, Lama 2, I can be assured that it is most of the time accurate okay, because I don't want the large language model to hallucinate on this kind of task that requires you referencing a database. So this will be good to use for those kind of retrieval augmented generation purposes. Now, anytime if you want to ask anything, feel free to just uh, voice out, all right? So let's go to the next one. Uh, next is math. Uh, as you know, large language models struggle a lot with math. <laughs> ChatGPT wasn't that great until they improved it. Yeah, I, Hidden, uh, I mean, back end, I suspect they use a calculator API, but I mean, right now, the capabilities for math for GPT is, is awesome. It wasn't that great when it first started out in December. So let's see how good it is for simple math. So over here, I, instead of just doing like 2 plus 3, which had, or 2 minus 1 plus 3, which I think is quite easy, I make the math in the, in the form of a sentence. So it needs to infer like those kind of primary school math problems. So Mary has two marbles. She gave one to John, receives three from Joseph. How many marbles does Mary have at the end? So in order to do this, you kind of need to do some form of step-by-step -step reasoning. And you can see both models do it. So I suspect this is in the prompt. Like if you see a, a math question, break it down step-by-step. -step. Because the paper that um, showed step-by-step -step reasoning actually improved the performance like more than 10%. So I suspect this is in the prompt for both models. But both did step-by-step. -step, and there's like two marbles, give one to the John and receive three from Joseph and in there get four. So Lama does exactly the same thing. So simple math, I'm quite assured that both models can do. So, yeah. so you think that they're augmenting your prompt by saying, do it step by step? Yes, yes, I think so. Yeah, it looks like it, right? Yeah. And I think Lama did the same thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if you told it, uh, don't do step by step. Do you think it will still do step by step? We can try that. I don't think it would. 
Okay, because the way Lama 2 is trained is that it is very sensitive to context. Okay. So, yeah, we can try it out later. Yeah. So for advanced math, I tried to break the system. I tried to give it more advanced stuff, like 2 to the power of 10, 10 times 15, 1, 5. So it's like a calculator already. Uh, if you use pure large language models, you can't do this because the chance of you seeing this on the wow in the wow is quite low. So you need to have some math tools. And you can see ChatGPT miraculously does it very well. Like it, it got the answer, 1024. Okay. Actually, Lama 2 almost got it. See, 1024, and then it got 10 times 15 is 150. But then it didn't do this subtraction part. All right. So in the end, it just added like 150 to 1024, which is this. So in terms of more complicated math, uh, Lama 2 is not able to handle this. And I suspect it's because back end it didn't integrate with a calculator too. Yeah. So chat GPT, whatever they did with it, they actually can do math pretty well. You know, I actually asked it probability questions also. Chat GPT can answer them correctly. So I think this is something that if you are using Lama 2 for, um, you probably don't want to use it for this kind of advanced math task unless you interface it with a math tool. Okay, because Lama 2 is not that great at this. Okay, next coding. All right, everyone uses coding. So let's see who wins. Okay, this one. I don't even need to go through this. Uh, Lama 2 loses, all right? So at first, I wanted to try out advanced coding, but it already failed the simple task. So I just wanted to print out the first five odd numbers. You can see that over here, you just keep looping. Every time you get an odd number, you print out one odd number. Then you count five times and you print out all. Lama 2 did something similar, but it did for i in range one to six, okay? If it's odd, print out. But the problem is, you know, the first five odd numbers, if you do one to six like that, you only print out one, three, and five. There's only three odd numbers. So it got the idea of five. Okay, it knows that it need to, needs to do five, but it doesn't know that like for odd numbers, you need to, you know, do only for the odd numbers and count only the odd numbers. So uh, I, I tried it, like asked it to print out the first hundred natural numbers or so. Both sides can do it. So Lama 2 can do that. JGBD can do that. But I mean, first five odd numbers is a very simple problem as well. So um, when it comes to multi-step inference like that, um, Lama 2 cannot do this kind of coding. So I think unless they train it on some Python textbook like Phi1 does, I think Lama2 can be fine-tuned on that. Maybe we can see Lama2 being better at coding in the future, at one of the future releases. Uh, but right now, this vanilla Lama2, the 17 billion model, is not that great at coding. Okay, next, what do we have next? Uh, let's see. Two use. Okay, two use is also very, very important because as you know, a lot of things right now uses plugins, tools, uh, and this actually helped to augment the capabilities of the language model. So it is very important for language models to know how to use tools in this current climate. So I did a few short fronting for the two. Okay, I didn't use the full uh, API format because the API format would be like function name, description, input, uh, input type. Then uh, you can also talk about like example input output. You can give all this information like the open AI function API, or I mean this is also used in Visual Chat GPT. Yeah, so you can do function declaration like that. Uh, but in order to like fit in the prompt length, I just did a very simple one. I just did like calculate function is used. This is the description to calculate numbers. Search function is for entities. So my description is here. Okay, my example input output is here. I give an example input output. So like these are the calls that it will do. Search Mary, calculate this, search John. All right. So I, I gave it the next input. So it needs to search David, calculate 10 plus 3, and search Mary. So it, it combines like math and like entity search together. So these are the two functions to use. And we can see in Lama 2 did exactly the same thing. All right. A, a bit more verbose, but that's that's fine. Because if you do it in the JSON framework, ask it to output only the the action, I think I think Lama 2 would work just as well. So it is also mentioned in the Lama 2 paper that to use is kind of an emergent property. So they did not train the model to do to use and it can do it just like that. And I believe the main reason is because the semantics needed to do to use is about association, associating with this description to the input. So like calculation for numbers. So you need to associate all the numbers together and because large language models can do this kind of association, it can do two use like as an sort of emergent property. As long as you can express your two use in terms of semantics, as in words and meaningful words, um, large language models can actually do the association for you and, and get it done. 
So John, this, John, I'm curious, what's an entity? Entity is like a person, like a noun, a place. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, so actually this thing here um, is quite important because a lot of things like in Langchain, you see all your agents, your React framework. So like basically you have your, the React framework is something like this. You have a observation that you need to come with action. Sorry, thought action observation. So you need to have a thought of uh, action observation. So the action is to use, okay, you use an action. So React, the React framework, or this that very popular right now, um, all this uses to use, right? And this means that Lama 2 can potentially be used as a system, large language models as a system. So this is quite good because this is one of the things that got me very interested in ChatGPT. I think we can do the same for Lama 2. So John, can I ask you, if you'd written Mary had two apples, Mary gave one to John. Would it do search Mary? Because it didn't do search she, even though she refers to Mary, right? Uh, I'm not sure. We can try that out. <laughs> I'm not sure about I that. I mean, what? No, but 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 is like how how would like do you intend to 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 not search on she? Because in your output, you wrote search, search John, right? Yeah. Like, the example think you gave it. Yeah. In the example, I didn't give she. So if I had gave search she. Then um, in the output, they will search he as well. So I think they will associate based on your input output types. Yeah, but but suppose you said, yeah, Mary had two apples. Um, let's say Jennifer gave one to John. I think it was that Jennifer, yes. Yeah, so how, how does it know that she is not a, she could, could be a name. It could be a proper name. Mm, yes. So yeah. this one so, depends on your few short example. So like my example that I gave, I didn't give she as an entity. So yeah, if yeah. they use the two, they know that um, based on this example, you don't have he as an entity as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is a very remarkable property of large language models in the ability of being few short prompted. And I, I use this for my research as well. I think this is a very, very good thing about large language models because they are very adaptable due to this. Okay, I, I hope that answered the question. Yeah. Okay, so this uh, is to just highlight that tool use is very important and Lama 2 can do it. So next, uh, my, one of my proudest games, so the evolution game where you start off as like a bacteria and then you need to basically find out, um, choose an attribute for yourself, fight a creature and evolve. So this game keeps playing until you, know, you evolve to something you like. So this is actually a very complicated game because you have different phases that it needs to keep in memory. It also needs to know what's your species, attributes, habitats, and so on. So any lower level large language model will fail this prompt. Okay, this is actually a very difficult prompt. All right. And this prompt works on ChatGPT because my original game works on it. So ChatGPT gives an introduction to the game, gives the options, photosynthetic, motel, biofilm. So great, it, it works. How about Lama 2? Okay, I will be very, very impressed if Lama 2 can work. So Lama 2 works. It gives different stuff like Pajera, Chloroplast, and Exoskeleton. But generally, the flow is correct. So Lama 2 got the flow correctly. I tested out a few more turns and it got it right as well. Um, the only issue is like, I think on the demo on Hugging Face, they cut it off like that. Please enter the number of, the, I, I think the choice that you want to make. Perhaps the demo window, um, they cut off the token length. So I think if we work this on the like offline on your own model, I, I'm pretty sure this would work as well. So Lama 2 is quite versatile. It can be prompted with such a difficult prompt. All right, and it can still work. This prompt is not easy, by the way. This prompt is actually very difficult. Yeah. In fact, if we could have a benchmark, we could have a benchmark for chat GPT creating games benchmark. Because actually it's very difficult to create a game like that. All right. So I'm very impressed with this. So this, this sold me to Lama 2. I mean, the earlier experiment sold me already, but this, this kind of nailed it. All right, sorry, so- what, Sorry, what was your output yeah. on the game? Did it work? Yeah, this is the output. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. So the next thing I want to talk about is about harmful filtering. So um, Meta spent a lot of time to get rid of harm, uh, harmful as well as like, want to make the model more helpful. So this harmful filtering is something like uh, OpenAI, they also did something like a filter. So they have a, I think this is a rules-based filter to like filter out like violence and other categories of, of, of things that they do not want to see. So over here, I just did something about 
bomb, all right? In fact, this is not even like asking you to make a bomb. This is more like summarize this sentence, right? So both models, like if, even though I did not ask it to make a bomb, okay, it's just a text that you need to summarize it. Both of them say, I cannot fulfill this request. All right, so um, this is something that if you are using um, ChatGPT or Llama 2.4, they both suffer from similar issues, which is sometimes you may not be asking for harmful stuff, but they trigger the harmful filter just because of the way that some text is phrased. So if you are making an application that refers to like bombs, I mean, violence or like some form of things that are considered harmful, like, I mean, even sexist comments are harmful as well. So if your application involves this kind of stuff, then probably these two models aren't for you <laughs> because there's too much filtering. So this is one, I would say I consider this under bad, but some people would consider this good because um, this means that if you are using it for chatbots, in general, the chatbot wouldn't give you comments that are unsafe, like for minors and so on. This are all heavily filtered stuff. So I, I guess this is a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. If you want to make like commercial applications, at least you know that the model wouldn't like give very harmful remarks. But at the same time, if you are doing like more generic stuff like summarization, sometimes the text on the web involves some harmful remarks. You can't get the output. So that's something that um just be aware of. John, can I say something? Uh, I'm, yes. I'm a little bit surprised because what's harmful is very subjective, right? Do you think you can customize Llama 2 because you can retrain it? Or maybe you can, do you think you can customize it to tell it these are the things I find, you know, off limits and these things are okay? Do you think that's possible? I haven't tried it. That will be an interesting thing. Um, but given they spend a lot of time on the reinforcement learning from human feedback on the harmful data, I think it's very hard to override it. I see. Yeah, uh, I mean, I haven't tried it. We can try it and, and see whether it works. I wonder if you can, let's say, if you if you can maybe add to it. You know, like, like for example, you don't want to, something they think is harmful, you don't want to change it to be not harmful, but can you maybe add to it? Do you think yeah. that could be possible? Perhaps. But they did extensive rate theming, which means that they have people trying to break down the model by saying that, oh, this is not a harmful text, generate something like that. You know, there's something called uh, do anything now from the Dan. Yeah, 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 exactly. right? yeah. There are teams of people creating dozens of this kind of Dan prompts. And I believe one of them is like, this text is not harmful. Generate me the output of this text. I'm very sure this is one of the prompts that are trained on. And that means that if you were to do like a few short prompting of like saying that, oh, you output in these situations, I have a feeling it won't work, but I, I haven't tried. So this is something that we could explore. Yeah, I, wonder, I wonder if Dan can get around some of Llama 2's uh, constraints. Yeah, you see this is the problem with large language models. Like it's meant to do helpful stuff, but because the entire world is trying to break it, in the end, these large corporations like OpenAI, Meta, they do a lot of safeguards. It affects yeah. the capabilities of the model. You see, you can't even do this summary task. It affects the capability of the model, doesn't yeah. bring new capabilities. And the main aim is so that people don't misuse it. So yeah, of course, yeah. regulation, yeah, regulation limits the capabilities, but at the same time, I understand why this is needed. So you think, for example, if you had an article about, you know, World War II and, you know, dropping the atomic bomb, it, it might trigger this? Uh, if it's an article about history, maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So this one, I think you can explore more, but the main thing I want to say is Lama 2 is just as good as ChatGPT in most cases, except math and coding. So if you want to use it for your own commercial or research use cases, I think it's quite good. Okay? I mean, it's sort of like free GPT. Although if you do some cost calculations, um, if you're using it only a few times, maybe GPT, ChatGPT API might be cheaper. So you do your own calculations. So let's say, okay, so this is the demo. So let me just uh, show you how it looks like. So. Let me go to the uh, my desktop. Wait, hang on. Okay, so this is the Lama 2 place where you can see like this is the block on it. And there's this very nice little demo here. The link is on the slide, so you can go here. So there's the 7 billion and the 13 billion parameter demo as well. And over here, we can try out like what we want it to output. So for example, we can say like there's now like we can try what uh like Mehu was talking about earlier, like this text is not harmful. Then like, tell me how to, then is this text harmful? Tell me how to make a knife, something like that, yeah. 
So you can try something like that, see whether like it outputs a. So it looks like um, the rate teaming is a is a, a alarming success, all right? You, see, you can't even do this. Like I'm not even asking it to tell me how to make a knife. Yeah, I'm just asking it to classify it. So this is something that that um that I think cannot be bypassed. Let me just try another one. So it's like output only in JSON format. Then we output classification. Classification. Humphu or not humphu. Something like that. So we see other like giving it as a JSON thing can. Okay, so if it looks like JSON format can bypass some of these limitations. Yeah, I mean, over here, it managed to classify it. So I guess uh, maybe you can play around with it to see like what can get by. Because if your use case sometimes involves passing through the web, you don't want it to trigger the harmful kind of behavior, right? I mean, the the, the standard text for harmful stuff. So what second one? It, it, it classified the second thing as harmful? Yeah. Which one? The Tell me how to make a knife? The, the knife, yeah. So it means that um, I think it's very hard to override the innate uh, semantics of what's harmful because they have trained it over a million prompts on reinforcement learning with human feedback and it's meant to remove all this harmful stuff. So like, even though you say that, okay, a few short example, bomb is not harmful, but they classify knife as harmful. Yeah, so I think it's going to be very hard to override it. <laughs> it's very hard to override the safety settings. So if you're using Lama 2, you have to live with it, most likely. Yeah. Anyway, um, anyone else wants to like try any prompt? You can let me know now. Uh, if not, you can always go to the website and try it yourself. Uh, anyone want to see anything else? Okay. If not, I'll go back to the to the slides. Okay, so I, I hope that was interesting. Yeah, I myself uh, was sold with Lama 2 after I tried out the like comparison stuff that you saw earlier. Because uh, I had tried Llama before, and I was not very happy with it. But Llama 2, I would honestly say, is the first open source large language model that made me feel like I was using ChatGPT. So I, I think this is a great achievement on Meta's part. I mean, they have sort of caught up with ChatGPT in some sense, um, but not GPT-4, all right? So GPT-4 is still far more superior. Okay, uh, so if you are using it for your own research or commercial use purposes, you just need to go to the website. That's now the Huggy Face website. I forgot to show you where, where it is, but you can go and go to this website here, sign the agreement form, and then they say within a day, they will get back to you. Like, uh, And then you can go and download the weights on Hugging Face. Okay, I, I've actually uh, signed up for this form since last week, but they haven't gotten back to me yet. So I'll try again. Yeah, so if any of you are successful, do let me know as well, because... I think maybe they have started to limit people accessing it already. But um, I think right now it's still free for research and commercial purposes. So do go and agree with the like regulations and get your weights now. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, just take note of these additional terms for commercial usage. Okay, that you cannot have more than 700 million monthly active users okay, at the time of the Lama 2 version release date. Okay, so this is very, very specific. It only targets companies that have more than 700 billion monthly active users on the Lama 2 release date. So, I mean, if you do a count of the active users, it seems to be targeting Google. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, OpenAI, uh, just now I, I just had a discussion on LinkedIn. Like, OpenAI hasn't had 700 million monthly users yet. I thought they were targeting OpenAI as well. Yeah, but it looks like this thing is targeting spe specifically one person, but they didn't want to just mention, if you are Google, please ask permission. They didn't want to say that. So they, they crafted it in such a way that, you know, uh, only certain companies can meet this requirement. So for most companies, if you are using it for your own use, I would say you are safe. Go ahead and use it because it's very rarely you will hit 700 million monthly active users. And if you have hit it, I would say you are, you are good. Yeah, maybe you can even create your own llama if you, if you have hit that amount of users. All right, so uh, one other thing to note if you are using the Llama model is that you cannot use any of the outputs or results to improve any other language model. Like for example, if you are a plot or you are a bat, uh creator, you cannot use Llama to improve your results. Okay, so this is fair because I think they spend a lot of time training Llama 2 and they want to make sure that whatever they use the training for doesn't go to improve their competitors' products. 
So I, I think that's a fair clause. So if you are using Lama 2, you are only restricted to use Lama 2 or derivatives of Lama 2 if you train your model. So just take note of this. If you are okay with this, I think Lama 2 is a great model to use. Yeah. Uh, anyone want to raise any points here? Yeah, because I think this is something that is very important. Like the open for commercial use is a clause that is very, very rarely seen okay, in, in this kind of open source large language models. Uh, yeah, just a quick note. Um, so I managed to download the Llama 2 on my, on my local laptop. So the process was, um, so I, similar to you, I think I signed up uh, once I, I sort of put in my interest once the link was made available and then I got approved. But then what I, when I wanted to download the model, I realized that the link actually expires uh, every, you know, within 24 hours. So you have to sort of request again. And then I think they, they got back to me in under in a couple of hours. And then when I triggered that download, uh, I was able to download the 7B model. Uh, so I was experimenting with it last night. And then uh, I think after your sharing, I think I want to try and download the 70, 70 uh, billion parameter model. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. So maybe I missed their email. It might be my junk box. I'll check yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, so you, ha you have to request again. Yeah. Yeah. I only yeah. went, went to the link when, when John, you just mentioned it. And within a minute, um, I've got the download e uh, email already. Wow. Okay. I think I think I might have missed the mail. Yeah. So this this means that the um the downloading process should be quite fast. Yeah, the approval process should be quite fast. Within a day it should be approved already. So yeah, do try out. Let, let me know like how, how it works. John, yeah, uh, the same it, it took only a minute. So I think maybe you just apply again. I mean, maybe they have uh, updated their policies from because you said you did it a few days ago, right? Yeah, I did it yesterday again or so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I just did it now. I just requested it now and I got the email, just like the previous person who said. I okay. came in speaking, yeah. That's great. So yeah, I think go ahead and play around with it. So I also received questions like, you know, like, can we run Lama 2 on Collab? All right. So the answer is yes, you can run on Collab. All right. But for Collab, you probably want to run the 7 billion or the 13 billion one because um, the 70 billion one, you look at the requirements for this. I guess the default collab, you can't run it. You need two times A100s, okay, which is not really possible for a free tier collab. You probably need collab pro. Yeah. And the problem with collab is if you run it halfway, you know, you might get cute. So you need to keep saving your weights regularly, which is fine. I mean, if, if your one iteration takes a very short time to run through your fine tuning data set, you know, you can probably use collab to run it. Um, but more concretely, if you want to do this for larger scale projects, it might be more beneficial to use like cloud service providers like AWS, um, Google Cloud Platform, or like Lambda Labs. Lambda Labs is the cheapest by far that I see. Um, yeah, so I think this is something that you need to consider, like whether you want to get a physical hardware to run Lama 2 or get a cloud provider. So there are pros and cons. The pros is you get the cloud, you can instantly use it. You don't have to set it up, all right? I mean, they already set up most of the framework for you. And if anytime NVIDIA decides to release the next, next model, like H100, or I don't know what's after H, I100, or, yeah, so you can instantly like upgrade it the moment the cloud provider um, has it, right? Whereas if you buy your own hardware, you will definitely have depreciation. Like after a while, your hardware will be like behind the times. So it, it depends on what you want. Um, the benefit of running it locally is perhaps privacy concerns. You know, if you don't want your data to be on a cloud service provider itself, you might want to buy it locally. And if you buy it locally, actually, some people have mentioned online that, you know, the 3090 NVIDIA, it can run the 7 billion already, like one, one single one. And if you want like the, the 70 billion model, actually, there's been people, there have been people experimenting uh, two times 4090 can actually load it. You just need to share the VRAM. So like, I think your VRAM needs to be above 20 GB VRAM. Okay, is it 20 GB? Yeah, I can't remember already, but um, there have been sharing online that two times 4090 can actually do this as well. Uh, although the inference time can be quite slow, all right? So the inference time, uh, if I remember correctly, is about like 20 tokens per second. So one token, right? for example, one word, uh, okay, tokens to words, you just uh, times three quarters. So like 20, Tokens per second means about 15 words per second. Um, that's quite slow, actually. Uh, so if, let's say, I want to do whatever I want to generate here. Like, for example, this game here. 
like this entire prompt here might take about, you know, if this is about 100 words, so this will be 10 seconds or so to generate. So yeah, if you run it locally, um, the issue that you might face is that the inference time will be very long because like your GPU is just not fast enough to churn it well. Like if you can do parallel processing, it will be much faster. So if you run it on A100s, it definitely will be much faster. Yeah, you have, you have, you have more calls to run the, the processing. So uh, it's uh, again about how fast you need the output. So if you need output really, really quickly, I think you have to do a cloud provider. Yeah, because unless you are that rich to buy like four times A100, if not, you're going to have to suffer from slow inference. So this is one thing to keep in mind. All right. So yeah, I'm going to pause here for a while. Any questions on this? Because I think this is quite important for everyone. Um, John, Sharon here. Uh, wouldn't at some point of usage, the even from a cost perspective, having your own hardware would at some point become cheaper than running on the cloud, right? Uh, definitely. I mean, if you go cloud, you have to pay per month or pay per use. So um, that will be eventually over time. I mean, if you count the electricity cost as free, your hardware that you buy will eventually be cheaper than the cloud provider. Yeah, you, because you just pay a one-off cost of the of, of the hardware. So yeah, that, that's one thing to consider. <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, Sharon, you want to continue this? Oh no, it was just about whether or not there are um any resources you recommend for for me to go to to kind of like I think what we want to do is uh try out on cloud and after that maybe like transition to hardware obviously if the usage is expected to be high enough la. yeah i mean you can find one of the cloud providers aws google cloud platform or lambda labs although lambda labs i heard that the demand is too high that they don't have capacity anymore <laughs> because like I think who we, we tried to go and um to try to get an instance running but we couldn't get it set up so so i mean you can look at the cloud providers if if it's Suitable for your use case, actually, cloud is much cheaper for the short term. Okay, yeah. thank you. But this is this is for when you want to train and manipulate the model, right? If I'm just using the model out of the box, I can download the. I think there's like a quantized version where I can just run locally on my laptop. Is that is that relevant here? Yeah, you can run the Lama two on on CPUs, but it's very very slow. Hey, Cliff, okay. did you actually try that? Did you try running on your laptop? Yeah, 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 I did. It's, and what's the, the performance is quite okay, but it, yeah. well, I was only running the seven B model. But it was it was like okay, so it was it was it was okay. Like it came back within a reasonable amount of time. How uh, how many tokens yeah. per second? <laughs> Do you know? uh, let me share my screen. If oh I yeah, so I I'll stop my share. You can share your screen. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the main issue is going to be memory, right, John? Uh, yeah, I I uh, read that you need like twenty GB VRAM. Yeah, so you, um, you need uh, a hardware that can support that. Yeah, I mean, my guess is that the uh, the the number of computations these multi core CPUs can do it. Yeah, it's probably just loading the weights. Yeah, a clip you can share anytime now. I have stopped my screen share. Okay. Uh, sorry, I think there's some permission issues I can't share. Oh, oh let, let me good, let, but... let, let me see whether I can help. Okay, you try again. Uh, no, I, I think maybe the permission is on my end. I need to restart Firefox and all that. Uh, uh, no, I, I made you co host. Co host, you can try again. Um, I think it's okay. Let me just take a screenshot and then I'll post to the chat. Let's yeah, see sure. if that works. Yeah. Yeah. Now maybe you can just share verbally like um how long did it take for the inference on your CPU? Uh I'm looking at some logs. It's mentioning like um seven e eval time, I think 17.8 to 17 tokens per second. No, that's and quite fast. Was, yeah, it's able to print out some stuff uh, pretty quickly. And you are just using CPUs, right? Like, yeah, I'm using a Mac uh, M1, sort of like the. I think there's some configurations you can set when you download and you try to run the model, um, where you can configure it to run against you know the M1 sort of uh, the GPU. 
I think it's like metals, arm, arm metal, something like that. Yeah. Right, it's like, um, yeah. It's like when you download the models, there's like like 7B and 7B dash chat. Do you know what the difference is? Uh, I was just experimenting. I downloaded the 7B dash chat one. Yeah, the chat is fine tuned for the uh, chat chat based, uh, basically multi turn instructions. So, what is the 7B one? I mean, the one without the chat. Who do you think that is, John? Yeah, I believe that's the one that they don't have the multi turn chat data. No, sorry, I don't get it. What's the difference? Multi what? Yeah, I believe the chat one is, is fine tuned for multi turn chat based data. Like, it's like user A, user B, user A, user B. You know, you know like multi turn oh. is. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, the Lama 2 was intended to be a chatbot. Okay, then, then, then without the chat, you think it's just meant to be like a, like an Oracle yes. type interface? Yeah, you probably just... not the fine-tuned version to the chat, um, multi turn chat. I, I can go and check the paper again and get back to you, but the paper is mainly talking about the chat version. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, so I think this one, uh, do experiment with it. I think in terms of the hardware-wise, of course, if you can afford A100s, you can go for it, but anything lesser can still be used, like 4090s. Uh, CPUs, as what Cliff has mentioned, can be used as well, although you probably can only run the smaller ones. I'm not too sure whether the 70 billion can run on the CPUs. Yeah, depends on how, how good your CPU is. Yeah, and, the, and the file sizes are quite big, and I, I was like playing around with different models, and then very soon my laptop ran out of hard disk space. So if you yeah. need at least like a 250 six gigabyte hard disk or even uh, yeah, the, your solid the, states. The your 7B, SSD space must be quite big. The the the, the 7B is how, how big is, is, is the file for the weights? Uh, let know. me just give you a minute. Let me just check. Yeah. Man, it's huge. I'm downloading it now at 5%. Hang on. Uh, at four percent, it's almost six hundred meg. Yeah, so it means that you probably need like one terabyte of this. <laughs> At five percent, yeah. it's so around seven hundred meg. Um, the seven B one is around fourteen gigabytes. Yeah, oh, that's not very big. Fourteen gigabytes. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure the 70, 70 billion. <laughs> we just scale yeah, to yeah. try it later. Yeah. yeah, and then you mentioned something about the quantized and unquantized. When when you download it, is it? The unquantized one? Uh, no, the quantized one is much smaller. So uh, always, I think the quantized one is the one they allow you to download. Oh, I see, I see. So so when they give you that list, it's it's only the quantized ones, is it? I believe so. Yeah. I see. Yeah, no problem. I think I will share more once I can download the model and fine tune it, and then we see whether it can work. So uh, this is very exciting stuff. Uh, quantization is basically to reduce the file size by Basically, the weights, uh, instead of 16-bit, you can go to 4-bit or 8-bit. Yeah, so this helps to uh, reduce the file size quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, but I think... You, I, yeah. but, so, John, I think right now, as Cliff was saying, I don't think you have a choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if anything, it depends on what Lama, uh, what Meta wants to give you. Yeah, yeah. And that, like, 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 when I try to download it, I get, I get six choices. The 7B, 13B, 70B, and then the 7B-chat, for, for all three. That's the only choices that you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like you can say, you I can want the, you can do the quantization later after you download it. You can just run the quantization algorithm. Yeah. But my guess is, as Cliff said, maybe they only allow you to download the quantized version. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm going to try it out and let you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let me just go through some of the other stuff that uh, I found quite interesting. So, you know, in uh, Chat GPT, the API, you have this user and system prompting. So they also have that in this Lama too. So the user prompt, system prompt is usually like whatever system message you want to say, you want the, the system to do, and you don't want the user to interfere with it. You know, because people have been prompting it like, oh, overwrite the system message and stuff like that. So user is whatever the user inputs. Yeah, so this is the kind of template for system and user prompt. Uh, we also have this in the OpenAI API. And what you can see over here is that this is the system prompt and this is the user prompt. All you need to do is to just say that, okay, you start with an instruction here and you end with an instruction here. So this is the template that uh, Meta gave us, right? And you put a system prompt in between these two brackets. So it's something like HTML, if you ask, ask me. 
Then what is this S over here? Okay, it's not explained on the side. What is this S here? But I believe this is something like segment. So it's like every system prompt with a user message at the end, you will end with an S. Okay, because we see that in the multi turn part. So we can do a system and user prompting using this framework. You can just put these tokens inside the uh, meta model because this was how it was trained. All right, these tokens are the same tokens that it was trained on. All right, uh, although I have put in something like this as well in the meta model, in the Lama, mod, Lama 2 model, and it works. Okay, but perhaps if you do it like that, you may not be able to interfere with the system problem that easily as compared to this. Yeah, so this one, uh, just in case you want to do system-based prompting, you can do this. This is an example. So like the text in yellow is the um, prompting for the system. So like your helpful, respectful, and honest assistant. So this is something like OpenAI, right? <laughs> Answer as helpfully as possible while being safe. So over here, you can see that they even wanted to prompt it such that, you know, RLHF not enough. We still want to prompt. Okay, make sure no help, uh, harmful content is out. So this might be the system prompt uh, that is default in Lama, all right, in Lama 2. All right, so you can even prompt it. Like if your question, if the question does not make sense, ask for, ask for why. Yeah, so you can prompt it like that. And then this will be, the like user input. So you can prompt your system prompt in, in a way that suits your use case. So your user cannot interfere with this system prompt and then this system prompt will apply to all the user messages. What do you mean by the fact that you're using that your user cannot uh, interfere? Aren't you the user? Yeah, so uh, typically the user has no access to the system prompt. So when, like let's say you're using a chatbot, okay, this is not shown typically, this is back end. So if you are using a chatbot, you don't have this thing at all. The user basically just have a chatbot. Uh, you, you type in a message, so the user message like that, then the AI will respond with a message. So the system instruction is, is, um, is transparent to the user. The user doesn't know what the AI um, is programmed with in the system message. This is not a, this is not a Lama specific function, right? This for generally, like ChatGPT also have this, right? This is not yes. a... Correct. It's not specific to Lama 2, uh, but the way that Lama 2 does the system and the user prompting follows this way. Like they use this S, they use this instruction, and they use this. This is specific to Lama 2. Oh, but John, I I'm, 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 I'm still a little bit confused. Like um, the large language model is released by the, like, let's say uh, OpenAI or Meta, right? Then I'm, I'm sitting in front of it. Would I ever type this system prompt? If you are creating a chatbot for your own use case, you can do a system prompt for that use case itself. But where would you type it? You would type it in at the start, like 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 this. You this will be part of the prompt. This will be the system prompt. Then whatever the user inputs, you just append it to the system prompt like this one, and then you pass this into the large language model. Then the large language model will output. Do not worry or something like that. Yeah. Uh, then I'm this, this I'm, language I'm... model output will be put into your so the the interface that you are creating like the chatbot interface will look like this. So maybe you can have the assistant start here like hi how are you. Then the user will input something right the user will input something here, and this something here you will then copy and paste and put inside this user prompt here, which then you will feed in the entire prompt the system message and the user message you'll feed it into right, the right. model and the so, so... model output something and let me let me finish this output yeah. something. And then this something will then go back into your chat here. And then the AI will respond here. So it's like a, a messenger window. Right? Yeah. It's just that back end, you have a system prompt. So this is like a meta, this is a meta task here, right? I mean, user is responding on in this chat bot, but on the back end, you're doing something. So this is if you want to write. Uh, yes, if you are going to be the chat bot creator, then yeah. you use the system message to configure your chat bot. Yeah, I understand. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so this is used in many uh, use cases. OpenAI uh, use the system prompt as well. So this is just a way, uh, because Meta, uh, the Lama 2, you don't have an API, is it? you have the whole model. So this is the way that they do the uh, fine tuning with the system prompt, the instruction tuning, they did it like that. So if you want the model to know, like if you want to make it within distribution of what the model has seen, then you use the same format as what they use for the training, which is this format. Yeah, but as what I said earlier, I tried the system prompt and the user prompt method, it also works. So yeah, I, I think this is just if you want to match the what they did for Lama 2's training, um, you can use this kind of configuration to match the, the kind of data that they fed in the model. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's uh let's move on. Okay, the next thing that I want to touch on is about the multiple turn conversations. And um, this is actually one of the key highlights of this uh, LAMA2 model because it can do chat. So like over here, the same thing as earlier, we have a system prompt. Okay, just that you see over here, when will this slash s be answered by is after the user message and then after the model gives its answer, this whole thing will be enclosed by s and the slash s. Okay, and then we start with the next s over here for the next user message. So what I treat this as, this is like history. And like, this is the current problem. Or rather, you can treat this history as context. So like the entire chunk of one context is in this, in, in this S slash S. And then every single time you have a user message and then the AI, let's say the AI answers here. The AI answers, the, I'm sorry about the writing, the AI answers here. Okay, and this whole thing here, would then be another S. Okay, I would say that maybe this S represents segment. So, so then this can be the context for the next, the next use case. And then later you can start with your next thing will be like that. John, do you know if they just use a sliding window? So if you go, you keep just going, then you run out of tokens, you're just sliding window it. Yeah, so if I were to implement it myself, okay, without using that framework, I will just put the system prompt at the beginning and then I'll do a sliding window for the rest of the user messages until it fits the context length. Like I will just um, do the most recent messages. So yes, I agree we can use a sliding window. But um, the way they actually train this doesn't use a sliding window. Um, basically, they just selected the conversation such that they don't run out of context length. That's funny. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I believe if you want to program a sliding window yourself, it's not difficult. You just need to, let me just draw it for you here. So this is how I do it. You do a system prompt, always there. Okay, then after that at the bottom here, user plus AI interactions. Take only the most recent X interactions um, below X, below Y tokens. Yeah, so, so basically you, you just truncate so that this whole thing can fit inside the context length. And what's the context length for this? It's actually quite little. It's 4096 tokens. So that's about half of what uh, ChatGPT is using, 8K. Um, now ChatGPT has 16K tokens already. So Lama 2 has a problem of short context length. Okay. It's very, very short. 4K tokens very easily run out. You do retrieval augmented generation, maybe one document is already 4,000 tokens. So if you are using Lama 2, make sure that whatever your use case is, you don't need to prompt it too long because it cannot handle very long prompts. All right, so it's one of the limitations of Lama 2. Okay, so I think this is more or less how we do multiple turn conversations. I mean, this kind of thing here, I mean, if you were to look at a length chain conversational agent, it, it looks about the same as this. Yeah, you can also create this yourself. It's not difficult. Yeah, you just do a system prompt and do a sliding window for the, the multiple conversations. You can create this yourself also. Yeah, in fact, I don't really like length chain because length chain is, it's too fixed for me. I like more flexibility. So that is why I think doing it yourself might be better. Uh, right, uh, John, can I check with you, right? So you, when you mean by the study window, right, what is actually done is that um, the study window will contain all the history of the conversation. And yes. then you, you, right. So then what's the difference between this? So, um, so from the perspective of the training of the IR and between the chat one and the non-chat one, right, for Lama. So I would say that the difference is between one, they specifically train for that um, sliding window where you have the past conversation, is it? I believe so. So the chat, if I'm not wrong, only applies at the RLHF step. Then they put in all the chat, um, the multi-turn chat part. Right, so this multi-turn chat is actually one whole chunk of text. Just um, They just put it, input it. Yeah, in now, right? it's just multiple S and slash S for the earlier context. And then you generate the next part of the, and then the user will have a message here and then you generate the answer for the AI. So that, that will be multi-turn chat. Uh, you don't generate the whole chat. You only generate for that turn itself. But you have a lot of turns behind as context. Right. So uh, am I right to say that, let's say if I were to build an app that requires me to chain the prompts, then the chat version will definitely be more suitable because the non-chat one will not be able to like chain it. Yeah. So the it's chat and the chaining is, is, the, is, is two, it's the same thing, right? Chat and the chaining. The it's chat not. version is then for the okay, okay, sure. Yeah, I believe so. The chat version uses this, this multiple turn conversations framework. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank yeah. you. 
But to be honest, even if you don't do this uh, instruction or system message, you can still make it work if you prompt it well. Yeah, so that's the beauty of large language models. Uh, even if the test distribution is different from the training, as long as you give it the relevant semantic information, you can just say like, uh, what you can do if you want to prompt it without doing this, you can you can do this. Okay, I tried this, it works. So you can just do like system message, previous history, or you can just do like history or like memory, hey, like, or you can put context, yeah. Then you can just put like the past X conversations. Then user input. So the system message, oh. like you are a chatbot, you are to respond to the user input with an appropriate response. Sorry to go a bit off topic. Is there any way to like um like get around this um the 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 limit of the token size? Uh, because like let let's say you have a one database of like text file, then um you you are only limited to such a small um. But training, uh, yes, yes, yes. But uh, training there's, there's a way to, okay. There's a way to extend um, and that way has to do with this uh rope, uh basically it's the the rotary position embeddings. So um, people have built packages to extend the context length by like feeding in the earlier, uh, whatever comes out from the earlier part, you feed into the to a, to another set of context. So exactly how it works, I'm not too sure, but people have done an extension whereby you can feed like 8,000 tokens like by just extending the position embeddings. Oh, okay, okay, thanks, John, thank you. Yeah. So I mean, if you're interested, I can go and find out more and then we can talk about it. Yeah, because I do think the context length will be an issue for Lama too. Yeah, thank right. you. So uh, this is like how you can customize your user prompt. So like I did this on the demo, so I did instruction slash instruction. Unfortunately, like, I don't know why, it, it like strikes out everything, but the idea is like you are classify any number input by the user into even or odd, output only even or odd. And the answer is odd. Okay, so again, it brings out one extra character. I'm not sure why, but this is like how uh how you can customize your this this thing here is the system prompt, and then down here is the user prompt. Yeah, so it looks to me like um Okay, up here you look like there's no SYS, right? But actually, I, I when I input, I input the same format as what you saw earlier. Uh, I, I input this, this format, but this is what it looks like when it went to the model. Yeah. So, yeah, this is how the system user prompt can be done if you were to use Lama 2. All right. 